Hello students, today in your algebra class we're going to be reviewing the absolute value, multiplying and dividing numbers, distributive property, and the properties of math. So at the end of this lesson you should be able to identify properties of math. In addition, you should be able to solve problems involving absolute value, multiplying dividing numbers, and the distributive property. So just a quick review Let's do a couple of quick warm-up problems. This would be a really good time for you to pause your screen and try solving these four warm-up problems on your own. Hopefully you've paused your screen and you're coming back to check your answers. So for number one, the answer should be nine because you have 12 and negative three, which are obviously, which obviously have different signs. So because that's the case, we're going to subtract the numbers, so 12 minus 3 is 9, and keep the sign of the larger number, which is 12, which is positive. For number 2, it's the same setup. We have 5 and negative 9, which have different signs, so we're going to subtract them, so 9 minus 5 is 4, but because 9 is the larger number and it's negative, it would be a negative 4. For number 3, you'll see that we have a minus and a negative right next to each other. So that actually becomes 12 plus 3, which is 15. Number 4, it's negative 5 minus negative 6. Again, we have two negatives right next to each other, so we change them to a positive, and we get negative 5 plus 6, which is 1. So to start, we're going to work on subtracting real numbers. Now to subtract real numbers, we're going to add its opposite. So what we're trying to say there is, when we have an example like 4 plus negative 7, that's equal to negative 3. But what we mean by add the opposite is, we're going to start with 4, and then instead of writing minus 7, we're going to add, which is why you see 4 plus, and the opposite of 7 is negative 7. So 4 plus negative 7, in that case, different signs, so we're going to subtract the numbers. 7 minus 4 is 3, and the larger valued number is 7, and it's negative, so it'll be negative 3. So, let's try another example. So we have 8 minus 13. Again, when we add the opposite, we get negative 5, and the same thing goes when we leave it alone. So 8 minus 13, different signs. So we're going to subtract them. So 13 minus 8 is 5. 13 is the larger number, which is negative, so negative 5. So absolute values. Absolute values measure the distance of a point to 0. For example, on the number line, the absolute value of negative 6 equals 6. And the reason why that is, is because the distance from negative 6 to 0 is also 6. So that would be something that you definitely need to write down as part of your notes. And to give you another example, we have a couple numbers that I'm putting up here for you. So. Here we have, I created a quick number line, and you'll notice when we want the absolute value of negative 6, what we're really trying to say is what numbers would give us a distance away from, what, which one of these numbers has a distance of 6 that's away from 0. So you'll notice if we start at 0 and we go to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that distance is 6, but also if we go to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6 also has the same distance. So that's how we know what the absolute value is, and it'll always be equal to a positive number. So a quick example that's slightly more spicy would be the 5 minus 6 times 2. Now notice it's still PEMDAS, so we have 5 minus 6 times 2, and 6 times 2 is 12. And 5 minus 12, the absolute value of 5 minus 12 is negative 7. 
And lastly, the absolute value of negative 7, again, it should always equal a positive number, is 7. So multiplication. So we have the identity property of multiplication and the multiplication property of 0. So to break this down really quickly, identity property, keyword here being identity, it tells you exactly what the number is or it's who you are. So when we do the identity property of multiplication, we're saying what? We're saying x times what number will still give you that same number. So x times some number will be equal to x. And in this case, the only thing that would still give you x would be 1. Just like if we had asked you 2 times what number equals 2, this answer would still be 1. So that's our identity property of multiplication. Multiplication property of 0 is quite easy. It says we're multiplying with a 0, and that would obviously be equal to 0. Just like 2 times 0 equals, surprise, surprise, 0. So for multiplying numbers, we have to keep in mind, if we're multiplying numbers with the same exact sign, like two positive numbers, that would be equal to a positive number. When we multiply numbers with two negative numbers, that would still give you a positive number. What's different is, if you multiply numbers with opposite signs or different signs, that would result in a negative number. So the only time when you multiply where your answer would be equal to a negative is when the signs are different. Okay, So division, same idea. So do you think the, dividing, the rules for dividing would be the same or different from multiplication? And hopefully you said they'd be the same and you'd be absolutely right. So let's try a couple quick practice problems. We'll go through these kind of fast because you can start and stop and rewind if you need to. Number one is three times negative five. So first of all, we're gonna check signs and then do the multiplication. So three times negative five, are they the same sign or different sign? They're different, so your answer will be equal to a negative number. So we have negative, we have negative five, or negative, and then three times five is 15. And for number two, we have a positive times a negative, so that would give us a negative number. And the way we read this is nine times five divided by 18. Now nine times five is obviously 45 divided by 18. So I'm gonna write this a little bit different so it's easier to read. Negative 45 divided by 18. Now, you'll have negative 45 divided by 18, so we're going to simplify. And since they both have a 9 in common, your answer is going to turn out to be negative 5 divided by 2. Number 3, negative 9 times negative 9. Notice how the signs are the same, so your answer is going to be a positive, and 9 times 9 is 81. Number four, same idea. Positive divided by a negative is a negative. Six divided by three is two. Number five, we're gonna do this in pieces. We're gonna do the numerator first. So three minus 14 is negative 11. Divided by two, or divided by negative two. And that would be equal to 11. eleven halves. So number six it's going to be a really important one so you need to make sure you're paying attention to this one especially. It says x divided by y so keep in mind our x is two-fifths and we're dividing that by our y which in this case is three-tenths. 
So we have three tenths. Now, when we multiply or when we divide fractions, we have to do something very, very specific, which is what I call copy dot flip, which that tells you exactly what you're doing. So when we look at this problem and we read it, we read it as two fifths divided by three tenths. So when I say copy, we're copying the first term. dot as in multiplication and we're flipping the second term. The second term is three tenths. So if we flip that over if we flip that over that becomes ten divided by three and once we have it back to multiplication we just multiply across. So that would be twenty fifteenths and when we reduce that, that turns out to be four thirds. Okay, so for number seven, try this one on your own, and I'm just going to quickly solve the answer, or solve for the answer. So we have negative one eighth divided by negative three times three fourths. we're going to copy dot flip so negative one eighth times now negative three times three fourths becomes negative nine fourths so if I flip that over that becomes four divided by negative nine and multiplying across that gives us negative four seventy seconds which simplifies down to negative one eighteenth